Raise your hand if you're able to hear me clearly. All right, good. That is good enough. All right, <clears throat> the next chapter we're gonna be looking at is chapter, chapter 30, abdominal and genitourinary injuries. Introduction. The abdomen is the major body cavity extending from the diaphragm to the pelvis. It contains organs that make up the digestive, urinary, and genitourinary system. Important for EMTs to know the anatomy and function of the abdominal and pelvic cavities. So you have structures within the peritoneum, you have structures within the pelvic region, and you have structures behind the peritoneum, retroperitoneal structures. You need to be familiar with all of these structures. Significant trauma to the abdomen can occur from blunt trauma, penetrating trauma, or a combination of both. Injuries to the abdomen that go unrecognized are not or are not repaired in surgery will be the leading cause of death for these patients. 10% of all trauma patients have some form of genitourinary tract injury. Let's review the anatomy briefly. Abdominal quadrants. The abdomen is divided into four general quadrants. Quadrant of bruising pain can delineate which organs are involved. So you need to be familiar with the organs that are located within each quadrant. So this particular slide is very important. So the right upper quadrant has the liver, gallbladder, duodenum, pancreas. The left upper quadrant has the stomach and spleen. The left lower quadrant has the descending colon, left transverse colon, and the right lower quadrant has the large and small intestines and the appendix. <clears throat> now, the other thing that you need to be familiar with is which of these organs are considered to be solid organs and which one are hollow organs. Solid organs will bleed excessively when damaged. Hollow organs will spill their contents, causing irritation and inflammation or peritonitis. Come on. Right lower quadrant is a common location for swelling and inflammation. The appendix is a source of infection if it ruptures. We will look a little closer at this when we cover medical emergencies. So I'm not gonna go too deep into appendicitis right now. The focus is kind of on trauma. Hollow organs, stomach, intestines, ureters, bladders, most contain digestive food, urine, or bile. When ruptured or lacerated, content spill into the peritoneal cavity. It can cause intense inflammatory reactions and infections such as peritonitis. Once you see the term itis, we're talking about inflammation. Once you're considering inflammation, you're thinking about swelling and you're thinking about fluids leaking, you're thinking about temperature going up in that particular area of the body. Intestinal blood supply comes from the mesentery, connects the small intestines to the abdominal wall. Patients with injuries to the mesentery can bleed into the peritoneal cavity. Solid organs, liver, spleen, pancreas, kidneys, perform chemical work of the body 
enzyme production, blood cleansing, energy production. Because of the rich blood supply, if these organs are damaged and start to bleed, it can become quite severe. Injuries to the abdomen. Injuries to the abdomen are considered either open or closed. Can involve hollow or solid organs. Solid organs will hemorrhage excessively. Hollow organs will spill their contents causing irritation and inflammation. Now let's look specifically at closed abdominal injuries. Blunt trauma to the abdomen without breaking the skin. MOIs that you need to consider steering wheel, making contact with the abdominal area, bicycle handlebars, motorcycle collision, falls. They can have compression type injuries from poorly placed lap belt, and they can have compression injuries from being run over by a vehicle. They can have deceleration injuries from fast moving vehicle, from a fast moving vehicle that strikes an immovable object. Signs and symptoms that you need to be looking out for. Pain can be deceiving. Pay close attention to pain with these patients. So if you have, let's say, a patient receive blunt force trauma to the abdomen, right? You know that there is a mechanism that causes blunt force trauma to the abdomen, the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, but the patient is complaining of pain to the right shoulder. That's liver damage. So that patient liver is damaged. So damage to the liver can cause referred pain in the right shoulder. Damage to the spleen can cause referred pain in the left shoulder. So pay close attention to pain and the mechanism of injury. So pain can be deceiving, often diffuse in nature, may be referred to another body location. Blood in the peritoneal cavity produces acute pain in the entire abdomen. Difficult to determine location of pain. There will be guarding, stiffening of the abdominal muscles or the patient um, is protecting the area. So your body can protect it or try to protect the area of damage and they can physically prevent you from touching it. That is what is considered guarding. Abdominal distension is often the result of free fluid, blood, or organ content spilling into the peritoneal cavity. And a distended abdomen is a late finding. It's not something you will see in the early stages. Abdominal bruising and discoloration may appear as a abrasions initially. So the abdomen, think of the abdomen like a cup with ice. So you have a cup with ice inside it. If you put water inside that cup, the water will not be visible until it, at the top of the cup until it fills the space between the ice inside that cup. So it's the same principle with the abdomen. When there's bleeding inside the abdomen, it's going to occupy space. Once the space is that are, that, are, that are inside the abdomen are filled, that's when you start to see this tension. That is late. So what you have to look for is sudden, subtle, not sudden, subtle discoloration, subtle areas of discoloration. Discoloration around the navel, the flank, referred pain, pay attention to these things. Seat belts prevent many injuries and save lives. May cause blunt injuries of the abdominal organs, particularly when belt, when belt lies too high. Can cause bladder injuries to pregnant patients. Foreign objects, hold on. Okay. 
fine objects enters abdomen and opens peritoneal cavity to the outside. So we're looking at open abdominal injuries now. Also called penetrating injuries, can be from stab wounds, gunshot wounds, it can be from accidental impale impalement. Open wounds can be deceiving, so maintain a high index of suspicion. And some people are just very lucky, because right? I've seen patients where um, impalement enter from one side and out the other side, and he's sitting down quite all right because he didn't catch anything vital. And then some persons, one, you just take one nickel punch wound and it catch a vascular organ and that's it. So some people are very lucky or fortunate or bliss or whatever we want to call it. Damage depends on velocity of the object, low velocity injuries, knives, other edge weapons, medium velocity injuries, smaller caliber handguns and shotguns. The shotgun is not like the rifle. The rifle and the handguns create that spiral motion of the bullet. Shotguns don't have that spiral motion. So they release pellets and they scatter, they spread out. It's more, a shotgun is more devastating at close range than at long range. High velocity injuries, high powered rifles and handguns. High and medium velocity injuries have temporary wound channels caused by cavitation. Cavity forms as pressure wave from projectile transfer transfers to the tissue. That would be temporary cavitation. The bullet's actual part or trajectory is the permanent cavitation. Low velocity injuries also have capacity to damage organs, internal injury may not be apparent. If injuries at or below the xiphoid or xiphoid process assume it has affected the thoracic and peritoneal cavities. So that patient may very well have a chest injury. Evisceration, bowel protrudes from the peritoneum can be painful and visually shocking. Do not push down on abdomen. Only perform visual assessment, cut clothing, close to wound, never pull, on clothing stuck to or in the wound channel. Signs and symptoms, pain, tachycardia, heart increases pumping action to compensate for blood loss. Later signs include evidence of shock, changes in mental status, distended abdomen. Distended abdomen is a late finding. Hollow organ injuries often have delayed signs and symptoms, spills contents into abdomen, infection develops, which can take hours or days. Stomach and intestines can leak highly toxic and acidic liquids into the peritoneal cavity. Both blunt and penetrating trauma can cause hollow organs, hollow organ injuries. Blunt trauma causes organ to pop, releasing fluid or ear. Penetrating trauma causes direct injury. The gallbladder and the urinary bladder contents are damaging. Ear in the peritoneal cavity can cause pain and it can cause ischemia and infarction and a patient can actually get something that is called a tension gastrothorax, but that is outside the scope of this course. That's more for um, paramedics or higher. They can also have a pneumomediastinum, but as I said, that's outside the scope of this course. Solid organ injuries can bleed significantly and cause rapid blood loss. Can be hard to identify from physical exam, slowly ooze, slowly ooze blood into the peritoneal cavity. The liver is the largest organ in the abdomen. It's very vascular and it can lead to hypoperfusion, 
if the patient is bleeding from the liver. Often injured by a fractured lower right rib or penetrating trauma. Referred pain. Referred pain to the right shoulder is a common finding. So that it's very common for persons to be uh, to have limit, liver damage and complain of pain in the right shoulder, referred pain. Spleen and pancreas, vascular. It's another vascular organ and it's prone to heavy bleeding. The spleen is often injured in motor vehicle collisions from the steering wheel, making contact with the body, falls from heights, bicycle, and motorcycle accidents involving handlebars. The diaphragm. When penetrated or ruptured, loops of the bowel invade the thoracic cavity, right? And the reason why that is gonna happen is because of the same reason why a flail segment moves in, in opposite to the rest of the chest wall. Anybody have the answer for that question that I had asked yesterday? Why is it that the flail segment move in the opposite direction? If you do, type in the chat. Patient may exhibit dyspnea. Now with the kidneys, with the kidneys, the kidneys can cause significant blood loss Common finding is blood in the urine that's called hematuria. Blood visible on urinary neatus indicates significant trauma to the genital urinary system. Your patient assessment, assessment of the abdominal, sorry, assessment of abdominal injuries can be difficult. Causes of injury may be apparent, but resulting tissue damage may not be obvious. Patient may be overwhelmed with more painful injuries. Some injuries develop and worsen over time, making reassessment critical. So it's very important to reassess these patients, especially if you suspect complications with the abdomen. It's a very large cavity. Bleeding is occurring from some vessels. It can be very slowly and distension is late. We will perform our scene size up, standard precautions of gloves and eye protection should be a minimum. Be sure the scene is safe for you and your crew. Call for additional resources early if you think it's gonna be required. Evaluate the mechanism of injury and nature of illness. Observe the scene for early indicators of the MOI. Consider early spinal precautions. If the wound is penetrating, inspect object and penetration. Perform a rapid scan. So after the scene size up, it's time for the primary. Perform a rapid scan, helps establish seriousness of condition. Some injuries will be obvious and graphic, others will be subtle and they can go unnoticed. Injury may have occurred hours or days earlier. Form a general impression of the patient and the environment. Important indicators will alert you to the seriousness of condition. Do, sorry, don't be distracted from looking for more serious hidden injuries. Check for the responsiveness using the AVPU scale. Address life-threatening external hemorrhage before and, sorry, before earway and breathing concerns. Earway and breathing assessment ensure the ear is clear and patent. If spinal injury is suspected, prevent the patient from moving, keep the earway clear of vomitus. A distended abdomen may prevent adequate inhalation. Providing oxygen will help improve oxygenation. For circulation, superficial abdominal injuries usually do not produce significant external bleeding. Internal bleeding can be significant. So trauma to the liver, kidneys, and the spleen can cause significant internal bleeding. 
evaluate the pulse, skin color, temperature, and the condition to determine the stage of shock, treat aggressively. After your ABCs, you should know the GCS of your patient, whether or not you need to do a rapid scan, whether or not it's a stay and play or load and go. Transport decision. Abdominal injuries generally indicate a quick transport to the hospital. Delay in medical evaluation may result in unnecessary and dangerous progression of shock. Patients with abdominal injuries should be evaluated at the highest level of trauma centers available. After the primary assessment, next phase is history taking. So if your patient is talking to you, history first. Not talking to you, consider your physical findings, vital signs, and then whoever is present that you can get information from. Investigate the chief complaint and MOI. Identify signs, symptoms, and pertinent negatives. Movement of body or abdominal organ irritates peritoneum, causing pain. To minimize this pain, patients will lie still with the knees drawn up. So they go into what we would call the fetal position to ease discomfort of the abdomen. Sample history, use your OPQRST to help explain injury. Ask if there is nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Ask about the appearance of any bowel movements and urinary output. Yeah. After the history, next is a secondary assessment. May not have time to perform in the field, physical examination, inspect for bleeding, remove, or loosen clothes to expose injuries, provide privacy. Patient should remain in a position of comfort, examine the entire abdomen, critical steps for the patient, sorry, critical step for patients with entrance wound. So examine the entire abdomen. Use your DCAP BTLS or IC, inspect and palpate for deformities, Look for the presence of contusions, abrasions, puncture wounds, penetrating injuries, burns. Palpate for tenderness and attempt to localize the specific quadrant of abdomen. Swelling may indicate significant intra-abdominal injury. Palpate the quadrant farthest away from the quadrant, exhibiting signs of injury and pain. And we always go bilaterally. Allow, sorry, allows you to investigate the possibility of radiation of pain. Perform full body scan to identify injuries. If you find life threat, stop and treat it. Assess the need for spinal immobilization. Inspect and palpate kidney area for tenderness, bruising, swelling, or other trauma signs. Hollow organs will spill contents into the peritoneal cavity. Vital signs. Many abdominal emergencies can cause a rapid pulse and a low blood pressure. Record of vital signs will help identify changes in condition. Use appropriate monitoring devices. If MOI suggests an isolated injury to the abdomen, focus your physical exam on the isolated injury. After the secondary assessment is your reassessment. Repeat the primary assessment and reassess vital signs. Reassess interventions and treatment. Interventions manage airway and breathing problems, provide spinal immobilization, treatment for shock, cover wounds. The communication and documentation, communicate all relevant information to staff and receiving hospital. Document results of physical exam and pertinent negatives. Describe scene, 
in enough detail to give trauma team a clear understanding. Be cautious and diligent when dealing with patients who refuse transport. Emergency medical care of abdominal injuries. For close abdominal injuries, your biggest concern is not knowing the extent of injury. Patient will require rapid transport. They need to go to a, a facility where they can get good surgical interventions. Position of comfort, apply high flow oxygen. If signs of hypoxia are present and treat the patient accordingly for shock. Patient with blunt abdominal wounds may have severe bruising of the abdominal wall. The liver spleen may be lacerated. They can rupture the in in intestine, they can tear the, the major blood vessel in the abdominal cavity, the mesentery. They can have rupture or avulsion of the kidneys. They can have intra-abdominal hemorrhage. They can have peritoneal irritation and inflammation. Close abdominal injuries continued. Patient, blunt, patient with blunt abdominal injury should be log rolled to a supine position on a backboard, protect the spine, monitor vital signs. For open abdominal injuries, patients with penetrating injuries, generally, generally obvious wounds, external bleeding, maintain a high index of suspicion for serious unseen blood loss. Surgeon, a surgeon should assess damage. Inspect the patient's back and sides for exit wound. Apply dry sterile dressing to all open wounds. If penetrating objects is still in place, place stabilizing bandage around it. For an evisceration, severe laceration of the abdominal wall may result in internal organs or fat protruding through the wound. Never try to replace a protruding organ. Keep the organ moist and warm. Cover with moistened sterile dressing. Secure the dressing with bandage. Secure the bandage with tape. So it's going to be your moist sterile dressing covered with dried dressing or occlusive dressing. Now, review of the anatomy for the genital urinary cystin. Not going to spend a lot of time on this. Going to go deeper into it in the medical emergencies, but ensure that you review your anatomy. So, controls reproductive function and waste discharge. Organs of the genital urinary system are located in the abdomen. So, you have the kidneys, ureters, bladder, urethra. Male genitalia lie outside the pelvic cavity, the female genitalia lie within the pelvic cavity. Now, injuries to the genital urinary system. Kidney injuries, not, not unusual, and rarely occur in isolation. Kidneys lie in a well-protected area. Forceful blow or penetrating injury is usually linked to these type of injuries. Suspect kidney damage if the patient has evidence of any of the following. Is there an abrasion, laceration, or contusion on the flank of the patient's body? Penetrating wound in the region of the flank or upper abdomen. Fracture on either side of the lower rib cage or lower thoracic or upper lumbar vertebrae. A hematoma in the flank region. For urinary bladder injuries may result in a rupture. When that occurs, urine spills into the surrounding tissues. Blunt injuries to the lower abdomen or pelvis can rupture the urinary bladder. In males, sudden deceleration can cause shearing or tearing of the, the bladder from the urethra. In the later trimest trimesters of pregnancy, bladder injuries increase for these patients. For the external male genitalia, 
injuries. So it's a soft tissue wound or injury. It is painful and of great concern for the patient. It is rarely life-threatening. Should not be given priority over more severe wounds unless there is severe bleeding. For the female genitalia injuries, internal female genitalia includes the uterus, the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, and they are rarely damaged. The exception is if it's a pregnant uterus. So during pregnancy, the uterus enlarges substantially and it moves out of the pelvis, which makes it more prone to traumatic injuries. And keep in mind that a fetus is inside. And if the mother starts to go into shock, her body will do everything to protect her, not the fetus. For external female genitalia, that would include the vulva, clitoris, majora, the minor labia. These are, it's very rich, it has very rich blood vessel, vessels in these areas. Consider sexual assault and pregnancy. Um, it's a sensitive area. If external bleeding, a sterile, somebody's mic is on. If external bleeding, a sterile absorbent sanitary pad may be applied to the labia. Do not insert anything into the vagina. And we, we will go deeper into the anatomy and physiology of the genital urinary system in our medical emergencies. For patient assessment of the genital urinary system, the potential of patient embarrassment exists. Maintain a professional presence, so please be professional. Provide privacy. Have EMT of same gender perform assessment if possible. Look for blood on the patient's undergarments. Perform your scene size up. Assess the scene for hazards and threats. Assess the impact of hazards on care. Look for indicators for your MOI. Patient may avoid discussion to avoid undergoing physical exam. Patient may provide an MOI that seems less embarrassing than the actual MOI. After you have completed your scene size up, next phase is your primary. Quickly scan the patient to identify threats to life. The genital urinary system is very vascular, so they can bleed excessively from traumatic injuries. Do not avoid this area in the rapid scan. Life-threatening hemorrhage must be addressed immediately. If bleeding is present, inspect exterior genitals for visible injury. Form your general impression of your patient and the environment. Always look at the patient, look at the environment that you find the patient in. Next, in the primary, LOC, airway breathing. Ensure the patient has a clear and patent airway. Protect from further spinal injury. Consider advanced airway if patient is unresponsive. Consider requesting ALS to do advanced airway because advanced airway is not a basic skill. <clears throat> Circulation. Genital urinary system can be a significant source of bleeding, assess pulse rate and quality. Close injuries do not have visible signs of bleeding, control bleeding if seen. Once you have completed your ABCs, or let me say once you have completed your LOC, airway breathing and circulation, you should know what your patient's GCS is, you should know if you need to do a rapid scan or focus. You should know if the patient is a load and go patient or a stay and play. Transport decision, any injury to the genital urinary system can be life altering. Often requires medical specialists for specialized care. 
Once we have completed the primary, next is the history taking phase. Investigate the chief complaint. Common associated complaints with genital urinary injury, injuries, nausea and vomiting is very common. Diarrhea, blood in the urine, vomiting blood, hematemesis, abnormal bowel or bladder habits. Obtain a sample history, use your OPQRST to learn about the patient's pain or discomfort. So it, it's not exclusive to pain. Ask the patient about output, especially blood in urine. Ask about allergies, the importance of past medical history cannot be overstated. Last intake of food and fluid, address events leading up to injury. After the, the history taking phase, next phase is your secondary assessment. Physical examination. The genital urinary system injuries can be awkward to assess and treat. Privacy is gonna be a major thing for some of these patients. Focus on specific region of the body when isolated injury is present. Look for your DCAP, BTLS, IC, identify wounds and control bleeding. Start with a full body scan for significant trauma. The presence of penetrating injury indicates possible internal injury. The presence of burns must not be, sorry, must be noted and managed immediately. Palpate for tenderness to localize, to localize the injury and the presence of fractures. Look for lacerations and swelling. For your vital signs, obtain the patient vital signs. Important to reassess vital signs to identify differences in condition. Patient can present with tachycardia, tachypnea, low blood pressure, weak pulse, cool, moist, pale skin. All of this would indicate hypo, perfusion, or shock. Use your pulse oximetry and non-invasive blood pressure devices when available. Then it's the reassessment phase. Interventions provide oxygen if there are signs of dyspnea or shock and maintain airway, control bleeding and treat for shock. Place a patient in a position of comfort and transport. Communication and documentation. Communicate all concerns to the hospital staff. Describe and document all injuries and treatments given. Now let's look specifically at the emergency care of genital urinary injuries. Now, the amount of times I have gone through the patient assessment in these injuries, nobody should feel the patient assessment exam on Friday. All right. Now, kidney injuries. Injuries may not be obvious. You will see signs of shock and blood in the urine. Treat for shock, transport promptly, and monitor vital signs en route. For the urinary bladder injury, suspect if you see blood at the urethral opening, signs of trauma to the lower abdomen, pelvis, or perineum, the perineum, is that area between the vaginal opening and the anus. In the presence of shock or associated injuries, transport promptly, monitor vital signs and route. For the external male genitalia, make the patient as comfortable as possible. Use sterile, moist compresses to cover areas of stripped off skin. Apply direct pressure with dry sterile gauze dressings to control bleeding. Never move or manipulate foreign objects in the urethra. Identify and take avulsed parts in a bag to the hospital with the patient. Amputation of the penile shaft that occurs, manage blood loss. Managing blood loss will be your priority. Use local pressure with sterile dressing. 
Um, the patient is going to require surgery. If connective tissue surrounding the erectile tissue is damaged, then the patient can have a penile shaft fracture. So the shaft of the penis can actually be fractured. Sometimes requires surgical repair. Injury may occur during active sexual intercourse associated with intense pain, bleeding, and fear. Still on the male genitalia injuries, laceration of the head of the penis associated with heavy bleeding, apply local pressure with a sterile dressing, skin of shaft or foreskin caught in the zipper. If a small segment of the zipper is involved, try to unzip. If a long segment of the zipper is involved, cut the zipper out of the pants with heavy scissors. For urethral injuries, these are not uncommon. Straddle injuries, pelvic fractures, and penetrating wounds of the perineum. Important to know if the patient can urinate and if there is blood in the urine. Save urine for hospital examination. Foreign bodies protruding from the urethra will have to be surgically removed. Now, avulsion of the skin of the scrotum may damage scrotal contents. Pre preserve avulsed skin in moist sterile dressing. Wrap scrotal contents or perineal area with sterile moist compresses. Direct blows to the scrotum can result in rupture of the testicle or accumulation of blood around the testes. Apply ice to the scrotal area. Do not apply the ice directly to the skin. Wrap it in a paper towel. For the female genitalia, injuries, treat lacerations and avulsions with moist sterile compresses. Use local pressure to control bleeding. Hold the dressing in place with a diaper type bandage. Do not pack dressings into the vagina. Leave any foreign bodies in place after stabilizing with bandages. Injuries are painful but not life-threatening. Um, the patient is going to require in-hospital evaluation. Transport urgency is determined by the type of injuries, whether or not significant blood loss is occurring, whether or not the patient is showing signs of shock. For rectal bleeding, it's a common complaint, may, may present as blood in or soaking through undergarments. Possible cause includes sexual assault, rectal foreign bodies, hemorrhoids, colitis, ulcers. Rectal bleeding is possible after hemorrhoid surgery. Now, sexual assault. Sexual assault and rape are common. The victims are generally women, sometimes men and children. It is a significant issue in Jamaica. Often there is little you can do beyond providing compassion and transport. The patient may have sustained multi-system trauma and needs treatment for shock. Do not examine the genitalia unless obvious bleeding requires application of dressing. You will be guided by your protocols and procedures. Protect the patient's privacy, so you need to shield them away from onlookers and be very detailed in how you do your documentation for this patient. So it should be very detailed, very detailed in documenting your assessment, treatment, and how the patient responded to treatment. Follow crime scene policy of your EMS system. So follow your protocols. Advise the patient not to wash, bathe, 
shower, douche, urinate, or defecate until after examination. If oral penetration occurred, advise the patient not to eat, drink, brush the teeth, or use mouthwash until after examination. Handle the patient's clothes as little as possible because we want to preserve evidence. And these clothing cannot be placed in a plastic bag. They are placed in a paper bag. Make sure the EMT caring for the patient is the same gender as the patient once that is possible. Might not be possible in all situations, but once that is possible, we will allow that to happen. Treat medical injuries and provide privacy, support, and reassurance. And that would bring us to the 